Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chika and if you don't know me, I'm a Japanese American living in Tokyo. In today's video, I wanted to talk about the differences between mental health therapy in the States and Japan because I have been to both and I've noticed that there are quite a few differences and kind of wanted to share that with you guys in case you ever want to visit or live in Japan, you kind of know what to expect. As a quick background, I've been going to the psychiatrist and the psychologist ever since I was pretty young because I've always had issues with my anxiety. I've always been a super anxious kid and I have been diagnosed with general anxiety disorder and also panic disorder. So those are the things I go to get help for. Lately, my symptoms haven't been that bad but I still like to go every so often as maintenance so I don't ever revert back to my old days where I was just like super anxious all the time. The way I choose my clinics that I go to is by going to a couple of them and then choosing what fits me the most. So I have been to quite a few mental health clinics both in the States and in in Japan. This video isn't to say that like one is better than the other. I just wanted to share the differences that I have been noticing. So let's go. So a big difference that I first noticed is the fact that in the States, or at least in my experience, when I have to go get help, I have to go to two different facilities. One for psychiatry and one to see a psychologist to get like counseling and uh, therapy. So it was usually two different appointments. But in Japan, it's usually in the same facility and you can just make one appointment and you can talk to two different, or not two different counselors, but one psychologist and a psychiatrist all in one sitting. I understand how it feels to have a mental illness and even just getting out of bed is really really hard sometimes. I think that being able to see two different doctors in one go is super helpful for those who really need it. They're saving some time and they're saving some lives. Yeah. The next difference I noticed was the fact that let's say you check into the facility. Well, in the States, the first thing they gave me was like a questionnaire to fill out to see how I was feeling. But in Japan, the first thing they did, they asked me like, oh, what are you here for and stuff. But other than that, it wasn't like a questionnaire. They made me draw a tree. At first, I was like, a tree? I have to draw a tree? Well, um, I hope I can make it pretty. And that's exactly why I have anxiety disorder. I don't know about all clinics in Japan, but in my clinic that I go to, they first made me draw a tree to determine what my mental state was like. Another thing I noticed that was different between America and Japanese therapy is the fact that in the States, how they helped my anxiety was like, they were like, imagine there is anxiety and imagine it walking in the room and out accept it and let it flow kind of thing and I'm just like well that's really easy to imagine because that's just imagining myself walking in and out of a room especially at like a party but in Japan they were like what are you struggling with specifically and if this is your goal like do this step to make this feel better and then like it'll make the whole picture feel better it was like very pinpointed advice it feels like and I'm not saying this applies to all American therapy and all Japanese therapy but in my experience going to both American ones were more generalized and like abstract versus Japanese ones were like pinpointed and tangible. Not saying one is better than the other, but it was interesting to see the difference. I'm kind of wary talking about medicine that they prescribe but because it's like a touchy subject, but I do want to bring this up. The main difference I noticed between American and Japanese psychiatrists is that in the States, when I had anxiety issues and I was having stage fright talking in front of people, they prescribed me something called a beta blocker. And if you don't know what that is, it just blocks the physical symptoms of your anxiety meaning like you don't tremble and you sweat less it kind of blocks off that kind of nerve that causes all that jitteriness but it does not affect any part of your life how you feel mentally so inside your brain you're still really really nervous and really scared versus when I went to a Japanese psychiatrist they're like let's go with the benzo di- wait let's see if I can say this right benzo diazepine that benzo oh my god I'm so sorry I don't have my computer on me right now so I can't really google it and I'm using my phone to film right now but benzo is what I'm trying to say oh I'll caption this right here. That is what they prescribed me as soon as I told them I've always had generalized anxiety. And to me, growing up in the States, benzo seemed a little bit like more intense because it doesn't just stop your symptoms, but it actually makes you calm. And they prescribed it a few times and I've only tried it like a few times because I'm not the type of person who would like to take a bunch of medicine. And they said just take it whenever needed. So that was good that I got to opt out a bit and I didn't have to take it every day or anything. Also, I forgot to mention with the beta blocker, it was called propanol 
Tylenol and I only take it when I have like a presentation coming up or I know that I have to speak in front of like 10 people and I get nervous. When I just take the beta blockers, I might be nervous but at least I'm not like sweating like waterfalls out of my armpits. I'm not trying to advocate for any medicine but I'm just laying out the info that my doctors have prescribed me for the same symptoms but in different countries. Another difference, kind of I guess, between American and Japanese therapy was the pricing. Both in the States and Japan, the psychiatry part, yeah you can use insurance but for the counseling part for like behavioral therapy, usually you can't use insurance and back when I was in the States, it was around I want to say like $75 USD and in Japan it's about $60 USD so slightly cheaper in Japan but not too much I would say. Quick story to get into what I'm about to say next. As you guys may know, I am very very lazy. I'm lazy to the point that I could be hungry but I'll be too lazy to chew so I don't eat or I don't microwave my food. That's all food related but I'm a very very lazy person. If I like put something on the floor, I won't pick it up for like months straight. So I talked to my Japanese therapist about this. I'm like, do you think this extreme level of laziness could be classified as some sort of like disorder that I have? And they were like, maybe. We don't know but if you're really interested in finding out, you could take the ADHD test and it never crossed my mind I have ADHD but I was like sure why not the test was only like $20 so I decided to take it and I don't know the results yet so I can let you guys know if I find out if you guys are interested but if I do have it like it doesn't really hurt me to know but when they gave me the test they were like oh like would you like a sample textbook with it I was like textbook and they were like it comes free with the test and I'm like okay I'll take it and what they gave me was this they literally gave me manga that's all about ADHD and like, whoa. It's not even like a textbook, it's literally manga. And that just pulled my heart and it's pretty interesting. It talks about the symptoms of ADHD and how to kind of like live easily if you have ADHD. So I love manga and anime so I was like, wow. I was so happy when I got this book. Lastly, I want to talk about one more thing. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I have been to many psychologists and psychiatrists and I found the one that I really like. So I just want to like share that real quick in case you are ever in Japan and you need like therapy I wanted to share the place that I go to and it's called you mental clinic and it's not like I want you It's spelled why you and this video isn't sponsored or anything I'm just sharing it in case you ever want to live in Japan and you need like suggestions on where to go I go to a place called you mental clinic and it's all over like the Tokyo region There's different franchises not franchise. There's different like locations of that same company and I like it because let's say you're having a panic attack and I, you call them and you can usually go in immediately. Other places that I called, they were like, we are super full for like the week. You're gonna have to call us back again another day. But I like you mental clinic because it's quick and you can just go in when you need it. I think they told me that it's like their model, like when you need us, we're here kind of thing. I forget the model, but it is really quick. There's a bunch of psychiatrists and psychologists that you can choose from. You can talk to and meet them. And the next time you go, you can like choose your designated person person that you want to talk to. So that is pretty nice in case you can't find someone that you click with right away. Also relating to manga, they also have a bunch of free manga online. It's on their website and if you have like let's say a symptom that you want to find out more about, like for me I have anxiety disorders so they have a bunch of manga about that like how to handle anxiety and they keep it lighthearted so it's not like reading a textbook at all. And they have like a mini test online. It's like a survey and then at the end of the survey they tell you if you need to like visit them immediately or if you're on the fence about oh do I need to go to a mental health clinic or not you can kind of do that free survey to see if they recommend you to come or not so that is pretty helpful in my opinion and that's kind of what I wanted to share with you guys today it was kind of like a chat with me about mental health therapy in Japan versus America I really hope you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up it'll mean a lot and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell notification if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video bye